All right, careful where you step. Some of the things that live out here are really bizarre. Oh, Corey, there's something there. Whoa, that is awesome. That is so cool. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Low Tide here in the Puget Sound, just outside of Seattle, Washington. I'm super excited to explore this intertidal zone because we have never featured the mud flats of the PacWest on the channel before. And let me tell you, some of the things that live out here are really bizarre. And we thought a really fun way to get some of these bizarre creatures up close to the camera would be to build our very first ever mudflat aquarium. If you've seen our tide pool aquariums in the past, then you'll know this is a great way to create a little mini environment and get some of these smaller bizarre creatures up close to the cameras. But before we can build the aquarium, we've got to find the creatures. So let's get our feet wet and get out there. I've already found creature number one. You might recognize this as an oyster. The oyster is probably one of the most iconic animals that live out here. And as you can see, there are a lot of them. But creature number one in the bucket, let's continue on and see what else we can find. Out here, there's a lot of broken shells. Please make sure to bring footwear for the environment. All right, careful where you step. There are some sand dollars here. They look like little biscuits in the sand. That is a living sand dollar. All right, we've never featured sand dollars before on the channel. I'm so excited. All right, so we've made our way beyond the oyster bed into the eelgrass mudflats. Vanilla clam, good addition for the aquarium. Whoa, that white crab, that's cool, awesome. Oh, look at this. Check that out, you see that guy? Hello, oh, he's trying to, trying to pinch me. That is the crab I was looking for. Oh man, he's pinching right through the gloves. Holy smokes, yeah. Ho oh, ho, Crab City. Look at this. Wow. Ho oh, ho ho. That's a lion's mane jelly. Oh wow, look at that jellyfish. A little too big for the mudflat aquarium, but definitely an interesting find out here on the mudflats of the Puget Sound. Dang, that's cool. Oh, Corey, there's something there. Look at that. That is awesome. This is a superstar for sure. All right, well, this has been a very productive search for creatures. We found a lot of cool stuff. All that's left to do is build our aquarium. All right, tank is set. It's a little bit murky, if I'm being honest, but I guess for a mud flat aquarium, sort of goes with the part, so we're happy with that. Let's kick things off today with some bivalves. We've got a clam. This region is world famous for its seafood. Clams are definitely part of that, but perhaps no bivalve out here is more famous than the oyster. Oysters from this region are world-class. You couldn't take a footstep today without stepping near an oyster. It's actually hard not to step on them. So we're gonna put those in the tank. Let's see what else we've got down here. Next up, from the Econoderm family, the sand dollar. I cannot believe it's been this long without featuring the sand dollar on the Brave Wilderness channel. And you'll notice that I have two very different looking sand dollars. This is probably the one that you're used to seeing, the one in my right hand. But unfortunately, this is what a deceased sand dollar looks like. You can see on the bottom there that the mouth is no longer present to where if you look at this one, not only is it covered in hairs, but it has a mouth right there in the center. These bristles on the bottom of the living sand dollar actually help them bury in the sand and they actually move. If you hold it, you can actually feel those little hairs wriggling around. But this is very cool. The first time featuring the sand dollar on the Brave Wilderness channel. What a day. All right. Who would have thought it'd be at a mud flat? All right, check this out. I could not help but pick up this shore crab for our aquarium today. It's totally white, almost looks like a white walker version of a shore crab. And if you're a fan of Game of Thrones, which I am, I couldn't help but adding it to the mud flat aquarium. I think that is a super cool and unique looking shore crab. Oh, here, let's, uh, let's look at it. Here's a normal shore crab. So here we have two different kinds of shore crabs, a normal one on the back there 
could be a purple shore crab, could be other some other kind of shore crab. You can see the one in the front there has some kind of albinoism going on. It lacks pigmentation in its carapace and on some of its legs. So cool. Bloop, bloop. The next species might be my favorite find of the day. Check out this kelp crab. Wow, it has like dagger-like claws. And you can see those little pinchers in the front. They're actually remarkably sharp. I can actually feel it, ah, ah, pinching right through the gloves. Earlier we were catching this kelp crab. I could not get it off of my gloves because it's just like a, it's like a spider. If I try to like grab it, it just clings. You see that, that's definitely a trait of an intertidal animal to want to hold on to things. That is a super cool crab. All right, let's see if I can get it off of my gloves and into the water. There you go, joining the fun. All right, it's time for the final two creatures of today's aquarium. Oh boy, wow, look at that crab. Oh my goodness. Officially the biggest tidal crab we've ever featured on the channel. I've seen some bigger crabs diving, of course, Coyote when he got pinched by that Dungeness crab, it was bigger. And in fact, this one kind of looks like a Dungeness crab, uh, but it's not. This is actually what's called a red rock crab uh, for a common name out here. And you can distinguish it because of the black tips on the claws, and then you can see on the carapace, the really deep reddish appearance. But wow, I did not expect to find a crab anywhere near this size. The red rock crab making its way into the number two spot in today's mudflat aquarium. It is time to reveal today's top creature. I cannot believe I actually caught this with my own two hands. Ho, ho, ho! And I absolutely did not expect to catch a fish this big for this aquarium video. Otherwise, clearly, I would have brought a bigger tank. I mean, it almost is as long as the tank itself. Look at how relaxed this fish is. This fish is relaxed for a very good reason. This toadfish, also known as a midshipman, can stay out of water for extended periods of time and actually has adapted the ability to breathe air. So being out of the water right now is a fairly normal occurrence for the species. See all that slime on the fish? It actually does that to keep itself hydrated as an intertidal animal it can get marooned underneath a log and it needs to be able to withstand hours of being out of the water so the tide can return and it can get back to life as normal. This fish is so bizarre looking. Corey, can you get a tight shot inside that mouth? See those sharp teeth? Whoa. You definitely wouldn't want to get your fingers caught in the mouth of this toadfish. It actually has these little like iridescent spotted trails around it. You see that, Corey? Like it goes down the center line of the fish. Look at how cool the face is. And I don't think we could have picked any better creature to be the superstar of today's mud flat aquarium than the one and only Midshipman. All right, into the aquarium you go. Look how cool that looks, Corey. Last couple steps, I wanted to add a bit of color. Found these clam shells probably were eaten by seagulls or something, but they have this bright purple interior. So I thought that would make a nice flare of color. Want to add a little bit of the, uh, the natural plant life. This is like a sea lettuce. So add a little sprig of that. And then how about barnacle covered rock to finish it off? That looks pretty good if you ask me. Well, there you have it. Our first ever mud flat aquarium in all its glory. I am curious to know which creature you thought was the coolest, so please tell me in the comments section below. But all we have left to do now is get a few shots of this finished aquarium and then let everything go right back where we found it. I'm Mark Vins, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Tide's coming back in. It's time to let our mud flat friends back off into the wild.